Go ahead. You really went for experience, didn't you? A lot of guys who played a lot of college football, what, was that kind of a philosophy going into this? We just went with the players that we, uh, we really liked and uh, appreciated. Um, you know, one thing I used on some of the earlier players, consensus, this, you know, it was a big draft where, um, you know, if, if every, every um, avenue of our organization can get behind someone, we felt really good about these guys, really good football players, uh, starting with Malik today. Um, just love the way he plays the game, plays our style. Um, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, running to the football and getting there with bad intentions, and Malik kind of uh, embodies that. Um, you know, one of our favorite interviews, one of my favorite interviews at the Combine, uh, really handles himself well, but on the field, uh, plays the right way. Um, you know, right on down the line, Garindo, Cowing, uh, onto the, uh, Kingston and, and Bethune at the end, players that uh, we really had a great feel for and, and, and liked them, and we made them Niners. Malik played a, um, um, one of these hybrid positions. Yeah. I mean, you, you guys seem to draft a lot of those guys. I mean, does that kind of denote somebody who's sharp enough to, you know, know several positions and react? Yeah, I you know they, he called that position the Panther at uh, the Panther position at uh, at Wake and um, I mean one thing with him it was clear right away uh, all his testing indicated it but when you talked with the young man he he understands football at a high level um, yeah, he's he's built like an Adonis and and uh, he just plays football the right way in my mind and in our mind and um, really cool to to make him part of our team um, team captain at Wake Forest and. Uh, we, we, we liked it, everything he brought to the table. Brandon Staley's obviously had players that he's valued, like Derwin James, that have sort of a flexible role like that. How much was he a voice in terms of him specifically? Um, all our coaches are voices, so they talk about everybody. Um, but it's more, I mean, not, not the way you're insinuating. I mean, he liked them a lot. Um, you know, all, you know, from him, um, Daniel Bullock, our DB coach, and Nick. Um, but when he talks about consensus and everybody, like, um, there wasn't a guy who didn't like him. Tom, um, now that it's, you're through it, what was it like without Adam for the first time? Did you find it different? Uh, did someone take that role? Were there times you're thinking, okay, Adam, well, oh, wait a minute, I gotta, you know, I have to think a different way that he's not here? Um, you know, to be honest, Tim, we, we're extremely appreciative for Adam and everything he did, um, you know, to help us along the way. He's with us from the start. Um, but you just kind of, you know, Kyle's had to do it. Um, you know, on the coaching staff, we've done it before with Martin and Ran. And so you just kind of move forward and people step in. Um, you know, uh, Tarek Ahmad and RJ Gillen did a tremendous job kind of in, in, in that role that he served. and. Um, Adam had his own work to be doing over in Washington. So you, you move forward, and we're, we'll always be appreciative for the contributions Adam made here. But you move forward. You traded it up for Isaac Garendo. What, what do you like about him? You asking me? Uh, well, we did. But, um, <laughs> um, I love his speed. Yeah, we, we think he's got a lot of speed. Um, all our backs can run, but it's nice to add one who possibly can run a little bit faster um, just for the change of pace and things like that. Uh, like, like his running style. Um, his running style, I think, is similar to Elijah's and the style that he runs with. And um, he's built that way and um, like the 40 that he has. Did you want to add speed in general to your offense this offseason? Um, no, we didn't make a, like a, a blanket statement like that. But it was um, we, we wanted to add some speed to the running back room if we could. Um, but you don't just add that just to add it. It's got to be the right type of runner with the speed. And there was a couple guys in the, back, in, in the draft who had that. And uh, this is the one we really liked in that way. Bobby Turner actually interrupted our Zoom call with Grendo. Um, what did Bobby Turner have to? Say? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what did Bobby have to say about him? Um, but, I mean, Bobby loved him from the beginning. He called him back at all the right times. <laughs> um, answered his texts. Like I'm just telling you, if you don't do that, like it's hard to come back from that. With Bobby. <laughs> um, but no, the same things I said. I mean, we all really like the speed part about him. Um, but it, you know, lots of guys can run. You got to be a good running back. And the physicality he ran with, how he was without the ball in his hand, uh, we felt like it was a guy who played to our style and uh, the skill set could help us. These guys, Bobby running backs guys. that that are interviewed by that Bob by Bobby Turner. They've been through the ringer. Um, they have gotten phone calls at all hours. And if they are prompt with their calls, it's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, Bobby doesn't uh, let it tarnish his, uh, his, his view of the kids, maybe.
Um, a little bit, but we, got it. <laughs> but we know how to weed through that. And uh, Garendo, he's uh, yeah, excited about him. Your, your cornerbacks um, can play inside and outside. Do, do you have an idea when OTA start up, who will be um, at the nickel spot? I know Diamondor probably is the top uh, choice oh. there, but who else has the ability to play nickel now? Yeah, I mean, I mean we think Renardo is a guy who has that kind of versi- versatility uh, to play inside and outside. Um, you know, Chase Lucas, one of the free agents we brought in, has played nickel. So we got some candidates in there. Demo gives us nice flexibility. He can do both. We think Renardo has that flexibility as well. We'll see. Um, a lot of that, it's nice when you have that flexibility because you can kind of toy around. That's on Kyle and them. They they start out whatever they w- uh, whatever way they want. But to be able to have that that um, you know uh, flexibility to to do either or, and then you just find the best matchups. Preference though to have a true nickel who just stays there and two guys playing on the outside who just stay there, or it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. I mean, whatever makes the end result the best. Um, if your best nickel player is also your best outside player, then we want to change based off of personnel. If it's not that way, then it makes it easy and a guy can just stay in one spot. But um, that's what's good about um, Adam Renardo today or yesterday. I mean, he played in college all on the outside, and we like him for that. But we also think he's wired the way you can be at nickel from a mentality in the run game, also the quickness and coverage. Um, but you haven't seen him do it. So it's nice to be, we know he's wired for both. Um, so we'll just play it out on the practice field. What do you think about Jacob Cowing? Um, very similar to what we did, got on when Ricky, and that there's not a route that he can't run. Um, it starts outside the numbers, and he's got the speed to get on top of people and threaten with a go. He's got the quickness. Um, inside, he'd be a big problem with just how shifty he is. He can run screens and things like that. Uh, very good punt returner. Um, for his lack of size, he makes up with mentality, uh, his mindset. When he does cut, he's always accelerating out of a cut. He's trying to violently go through people. And um, when you're fat, when you're smaller, you hope they're faster and quicker, which he is. And anything that you want to knock on a smaller guy, he makes up for in his mindset. There's just some of the conversations. I'm sorry. Just um, you know, we had a corner um, in here on the on the 30, and so the, sometimes those are the value of the 30. He he had played against Jacob Cowing, and uh, you know, Jacob is small in, in stature. But what Kyle was alluding to, the toughness to overcome that. This corner said he's the toughest guy he played against this year. So those things stick with you, and it's a corner we respected his word, and that kind of just came up in a conversation as the coaches were going through it. So that kind of communication is is vital. But um, Jacob, it's he's he's a fun dude to watch play football, um, and uh, you know I think can help us in a variety of ways. We got a lot of guys with that special teams experience today. Just does the new kickoff rules change the traits you're looking for for guys when they're returning or on the coverage stuff? Do you have to alter? Looking for on that. Yeah, I, I think we're all trying trying to figure it out. This is going to be a new deal for everyone. Uh, you do your best to try to ascertain, like, okay, what skill set is going to play on this new kickoff. You don't change your whole entire mentality. Uh, we think we have some players that are well suited for it, but uh, I think the whole league's going to kind of be figuring this out on the run because we've never done it, <laughs> and uh, it should be interesting. Um, a couple days ago, you mentioned obviously you want to make the team as well as best you can in 24, but. You're also looking at 25 and maybe even beyond. Given what we know about this team, some older players or players are about to make a lot of money. We know the financial stuff. Was there even more emphasis, not on just this year, but into the future with this draft or this offseason or just the way you're thinking right now? Um, I mean, it's hard to say there's a lot more because it feels like it's been almost this way three years in a row. Um, I think it gets a little more each year um, because it gets harder each year. Um, and the hardest thing is when you go through the draft and especially when you feel you're a contender and things like that, you want to do everything to just look at your board and how you fill those holes and everything, but that's not really how the draft works. Um, it's how, how it comes to you and you got to look at it at different levels and through different layers and you got to think and right now and you got to think ahead, but you know, being close like we were last year, feeling we're going to have a chance to at least have an opportunity to try to do something like that again. You, you want to think always what helps us now, but then you get to that spot and there always isn't that answer right then. And so you go with what kind of helps us now or what helps us more in the future. And so you're just constantly weighing that, whether it's the draft, whether that's free agency um, and everything. 
you guys are following up on that, when you're evaluating prospects in, in that way, how are you kind of viewing, you know, a guy who maybe won't be as helpful this year but could potentially have more long-term value versus yeah. you know, this is kind of what he is right now? Yeah, I, you know, I think – I think this class is representative of it. I, you know, I don't know a player. I think all these guys can contribute this year. So you try to do both. You try to say, hey, okay, does this guy have starter in him in some time? Is there some development that he can someday be a starter? But right away, can he help? Special teams is off, often uh, the avenue. Um, I think back to my career. I didn't start till year three, but I was. I think I was a good member of the team because I contributed in special teams for the first couple of years and played some defense. So. That's really integral, and so it's that thought process, and um, you know that's I I, I I like this class because of just that. I, I think all these guys, uh, it's tough. It, it, it's a really good roster, so it's it's going to be tough to crack for these guys. We do believe that they have the skill sets, the mentalities, the makeup that they can come in and and find a way if it's on them now. But um, you know they can come in and compete right away, and 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 then we do believe that with the development, which is part of what we do as well, con con consistently developing guys so that they we get the most out of them and in, in, into the future as well. I'd always yeah, I'd always say I wish it was the other way around, but like last year, you're done with free agency and stuff, and you go in the draft, and it's like where do you need a starter? And yeah, you always want the best starter possible, but where do you have to get a starter? And you, you go into last year's draft, and it's to me it was one position, it was kicker. Um, and so, yeah, there's some starter positions. Is you can't find a better guy, and there's some. There's a few. There's a lot better, um, but they're all still guys you feel you can win with as starters. And you go into a draft, and you're like, all right, well, we don't have a kicker, so we we got to find a starting kicker somewhere. What else do we want to do? Well, we'd like to get better in this area, this area, and that area. But where is that guy when that draft comes? And if that's not available, then do you get a guy to beat someone else out. You get a guy because. Hey, this guy might be up on a contract next year, and this guy could be a backup in case of injury, and we can plan for the future. Or is this just the best player available? And that's like, that's why there's so many different layers to all of this. And wish the draft came first. You can always just sit there and take the best player that came, and then then you could go into free agency and try to figure out like, all right, where can we go fill these holes? But it goes the other way, and um, that's why it's a bigger window than just right now. How do, you guys, how do you guys feel just about the roster overall? I mean, you haven't had to make any drastic moves the last two months, whether free, bringing in a huge free agent, making a bigger first round draft pick or whatever like that. Where, where is this roster right now? I feel like we're always making, you know, really important decisions. And that's part of this job. It's, it's not easy. I mean, when you, when you, um, you know, when when a guy like Eric Armstead moves on, that's a big move for our organization. When you bring when you trade for Malik Collins, that's a that's a big move for our, every one of these draft picks. We take really seriously, and sometimes they go right down to the wire, you know. And and uh, there's great talk, debate, passion for candidates. I mean, those are all, and that's what makes this whole thing fun. And uh, I, I I do know this that when you have a spirit of everyone doing it together, I think uh, everyone's on the same page, and so we're all in and. It's the way Kyle and I try to work. You know, sometimes, um, you know, I'm passionate about a player, and 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 most of the time, Kyle and I see it the same way. Sometimes, all right, what do you see in them? And I, you know, try to sell it. To, oftentimes, Kyle will like a player, and I'm not quite there. But here's what I like, and and um, the good thing is we always get there. And I think the rest of the organization follows suit. And so you challenge each other on people you're passionate about, and in the end, all these situations and and. Uh, you know, scenarios are big for your organization. Every decision's a big one, and uh, yeah, I like where our team's at. Um, well, I'm sorry, Kyle, you, you had the Armstead thing, which John mentioned. I mean, we know the Debo situation may be up in a year. We'll see. And there's other players who are getting to that point. Do you have these conversations with your players? Do you think there is some kind of added pressure about this year? you got the Purdy contract maybe coming up in a year. Is there a little extra on this group of players this coming year um i mean i think i think when you get close to a super bowl and you and you don't win it i think there's always pre more pressure i mean especially from outside in because you just you're going to hear about it more so i think i mean everyone has a certain expectation for the season and things like that because you always you always want to do better the next year and there's not a lot of room to do better um there's only one more game and so like everyone wants to get their mind to that spot but Every team's different each year too, and so you go into a year and 
the main thing is you don't want to get worse. You always try to get better, but you don't want to get worse. And um, when you do have players that have played a lot of good football over these last um, three to five years, I mean, it it becomes a problem because you got to pay guys and it's harder to keep carrying that. And that's why we went in a free agency. Like you have to make a lot of hard decisions, but we're not ready to take two steps back. So eventually we can take three steps forward or what, however that is like, so, you, but you don't know if that's possible. And so you try to make your free agent decisions that way. You try to do the draft that way. And I feel we're in a position that, um, hopefully we, I don't think we did get worse. I think we've tried to keep it to where we're there. And now what happens is when, we go to we start working on Monday. What happens in OTAs? What happens in training camp? And that's what allows some younger guys to hopefully that we've added to develop them and add them for depth, or um, maybe to take over somebody's spot, or maybe to make the guy in front of them better because they got some better competition behind them. And that's the way you get your team better. And that's re really where we're at. We did it through free agency as good as we could. We did it through the draft as good as we can. And um, now I'm excited to focus on real football and going to work. Tim was saying, we'll take two more. Uh, Eric and Jerry. Right, Eric. Um, assuming you guys may have looked at offensive tackles and, and tight ends, was it the fact that you didn't address those positions? Was that the situation, kind of the way the draft fell? Yeah, I, you know, we uh, we looked at numerous guys throughout the the process. I think when you're drafting 31st, it's it's oftentimes hard to you know find a tackle that that you really love, and and uh, we like our tackles uh, as they stand right now. Um, we like our depth with Jalen Moore being a really talented guy who can who can play you know the swing role. Um, drafted Kingston who has some flex at, at tackle, and uh, we'll continue to always try to improve ourselves, improve the depth of our team. But uh, we're excited about our O line group. I know a lot of people talk about that, but uh, we feel pretty good about our group. Yeah, we're glad to add two O linemen in the draft. Um, would have loved to add a tight end, it just don't work out that way. Lot two, you're looking at your, I guess. First backup option? No, looking at all the all the tight ends. Kingston was saying yeah. that uh, yeah, he hasn't been out here yet, so you know we, we like guys to practice first. <laughs> I'll, I'll allow that. <laughs> uh, Kingston was saying his last year at USC kind of expanded the way he blocked. He was doing more outside zone and yeah. such. I was curious whether so many guys have transferred now oh. for a year. Do you? Is that, does that age your scouting because you get to see him on one system and then another system? And That's such an interesting dynamic. When I first took this job, I mean, we used to stop our our draft reports when a guy's transferred. Like, what's wrong with him? Why did he transfer? Now it's the exception to the rule when they've been. I think we were seven of eight this year. Guys have transferred. So, um, so it, that's that's really interesting. But. Um, you know, with a guy like Kingston, played really good football, you get enticed to transfer. So I don't blame those guys. SC probably paid them some good money to uh, to come down there. And that used to be illegal, so it sounds foreign. Now it's all good. <laughs> SC used to be really good at it, even when it was illegal. Sorry, Jen. Um, but, uh, um, but uh, you know, now it's all good. And, and so, you know, good for those kids. And um, there is some value to them. You see them in different schemes, uh, different positions oftentimes. And, um, you know, it, it, it's just you know, Jacob Cowan started at UTEP, then came to U of A and had two really productive uh, seasons. And, and so it's just all these guys have their stories. Um, as long as they understand they can't transfer here. Yeah. <laughs> the first practice doesn't go right. So. Guys, were there any fun calls? I mean, I'm sure they're all fun. Uh, were there any surprises today? I know sometimes you have good stories about the calls you make. It wasn't a great story because they're just, yeah. it's, I mean, they're, they're emotional and you hear how you yeah. take guys, especially here in the sixth, seventh round, and you just, you guys, you guys have been waiting for these to end. Yeah. Think of how long it is if you're waiting to see where, what's going to, yeah. the rest of your life's going to be like. So you can just imagine how intense that is and the anxiety, and you can just, they barely can talk when you first talk to them. And then, if, if they haven't broke by John, they eventually break halfway through me, or then they do it to Jed. So yeah. it's um, it's that doesn't get old. You're real happy for people when you can relieve them of that and something they've worked their whole life. But you also try to remind guys, congratulations. Like I know this your goal your whole life, but now it starts. So yeah. go to work. Each of them. I mean, these calls are so cool. It really is. And uh, Kingston, I'm thinking he's from Redding, California. I don't. I know Redding's up north somewhere. How Anderson, Redding. 
But I said, how about that? We're going to make a kid from Reading a, a 49er, and you could you could hear him start to, to melt, you know? And, and uh, I think it was Bethune who really yeah. cracked up. I could I could hear it starting to happen. I had him to Kyle, and Kyle said after, man, he, he just lost it. It's a lot of waiting. Um, it's brutal. And, uh, you know, it's uh, – but it's really cool to share this experience with them, to hear them, their families all around them, and – uh, a great, great day for these guys, and and uh, really, really cool to be a part of that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys.